Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Hi, Coxie. And we're just recording via Zoom. That's really technical. I like this stuff. <laughs> well, we're uh, we're problem solving on the fly here, Coxie. We are problem solving on the fly. You sound a bit like a robot. Oh my gosh! Well, I'm hoping that Zoom, because we're we're using Zoom like the rest of the planet. I think. Um, if anybody had stocks or shares in Zoom, oh, yeah. they'd be pretty stoked at the moment. Oh, yes. You know what would make me really happy is if Hamish Blake were to drop in on our Zoom meeting like he's <laughs> currently doing with everybody else's. Yeah, How cool right would that be? That would yeah, make yeah. a good podcast episode. Well, I had an idea this morning about setting up a Zoom and sharing the link with our followers and just letting people drop in and out of a podcast and just record it and just see what happens. Can we do that? Yeah. Absolutely. Right, let's do it. We'll advertise it. Done. So, uh, yeah, if no, you're listening to this episode and you would like to to be a part of of podcasting history during <laughs> the, the good old Rona then you need period, to uh, yeah, grab the link and you can drop in and out of our of our recording. But today uh, we're starting the first of our daily tradey Rona casts. Trady Rona. Woo, I like it. <laughs> Talk about thinking on the fly. <laughs> so, Trady Rona cast is in response to apparently there's a virus thing and apparently people have been losing their shit about it. Something's uh, going on. Might be why they're buying so much toilet paper. And we're currently deep into all sorts of different lockdowns around the country, around the globe. Mm. And it's interesting, I was actually just uh, thinking this morning that I've kind of forgotten a bit about all of the drama and the panic. I tend not to, um, well, I don't read the news headlines, I don't watch television, I don't read the paper, and I stay away from Facebook other than our awesome group of tradies and, and some of the stuff going on with the trade desk and the drawing board. And... It's been really cool. I'm actually in um, isolation with my wife at the moment. So uh, we have nine days to go. Uh, so uh, <laughs> not that we're counting. No, uh, not even. I'm sure if I asked you, you'd have all the minutes and seconds down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can tell you it's 6 p.m. on the 12th <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. I'll be, I'll be like doing a nudie run up and down the street. I'm sure your neighbours will be looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I might mention how cold it is down there. So maybe <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> um, but it's it's interesting. It's like the the initial panic and drama and everything is maybe getting a bit old for people. And there's a lot of people just getting on with it, I think, Coxie. I think there's a lot of people getting on with it. And I think there's a lot of... If, the, if there was one thing that I can see as a common side effect right at the moment, it's frustration at the lack of cold hard facts it's really yeah. hard to find the actual definable rules because i don't think they're actually very definable they're always yeah. with an exception or, or with an interpretation rather than being just straight rules if we had straight rules that you can only have one person to your house at a time tradie or not full stop then that would clarify some stuff for our tradies but they're getting very frustrated by the fact that they can't really you know they may interpret that loose rule as one thing but somebody else interpret, typically their clients, are interpreting it in a very different way. It's very frustrating. So I feel that we've moved into that cycle of frustration now rather than fear. And certainly there's still a lot of worry. And when I say worry, I think most people now are more worried about their business than they are or their livelihood, full stop. It's not just tradies. Rather yeah. than being worried about the virus itself. Yeah. and, and That stage of frustration is certainly very real. Absolutely. And when the, the rule makers and the, um, the public departments that are meant to administer all this stuff can't even figure out what they're doing, how the... Are we, are we making these daily tradie Ronacasts um, 
sweary. Yes. Sweary. Yeah. <laughs> well, real. I haven't trimmed my beard since I left uh, Queensland uh, <laughs> ten days ago. So I'm I'm kind of at the stage, and I can't have a haircut. Like we're not allowed to actually leave our property for any reason other than emergency medical treatment during our our ISO. Are your hairdressers even open? Uh, I, th- I'm not sure down here in Taswija. Um, well, ours are allowed open, but most of them are closed. I had to cut, um, teenagers hair the other day, which, oh, that was interesting. <laughs> I promised the hairdressers they can all have their job back as soon as we're allowed out of the house. Well, speaking of fear, when I, when I suggested to wifey that, uh, she might have to cut my hair, I think there was more <laughs> of a look of fear on her face about that than there was about the Rona. Oh, yeah, I would not touch your hair. <laughs> no so way. I'm, I'm actually thinking, you know, I've moved to Tassie. I'm living on acreage out in the country. Uh, we, we've got some chooks arriving uh, once we've finished our ISO. Uh, I'm looking at getting some cattle and having a couple of cows grazing in the paddock here on our property. I'm thinking, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to grow my hair and my beard and be a wild man. A man of the wild, a wildebeest. <laughs> <laughs> and I wear vests and flannels just about every day. So. You are so ridiculously country. And you own a gun. And you've got <laughs> a fierce-looking dog. And, Who? Yeah, no, you fit yeah. the bill very and, well. And a big black um, hunting dog. Yes. Not painting a very good He's picture here for our partners, Coxie. No one's going to want to do business with, with tradies <laughs> in business. <laughs> Please, Bunnings, we'd really like a partnership with you. <laughs> but I'm being oh, authentic. and. Well. And you know what? Oh, here we go. I smell, I smell a was segue here. Coxie. I like it. I can see where you're I going already. I can smell it coming. So, speaking of being authentic, and that's probably what that's been part of my motivation. It's like, well, enough of the bullshit. Enough of the mm-hmm. neatly trimmed beard and the and the you know carefully manicured hair and the choosing the shirt when I get up in the morning. I'm pretty sure I've been wearing this same shirt for three days in a row, Ed. Uh, yeah. Ed Ray, if you if you're tracking the shirt, mate. Um, I kind of just I, I actually thought the other day I was like, why, why do I why do I worry so much about all that shit? It's a good and question. so what if my hair's scruffy and I got a be- a beard that's untrimmed and my shirt smells like three days ago? Um, it doesn't change how I feel about our tradies. It doesn't change. Uh, the way you and I work together. If anything else, I think it creates a lot of freedom to let go of some of that stuff. Mm. And um, and there's there's been a lot of oh, I can't I can't think of the right way to put this word together. Disingenuousness. Yes, um, you've got it. Yes. Fake shit. Yeah. And and I actually think that the Rona has caused a lot of rethinking from people around fake presentation of themselves, the fake economy, fake businesses, fake people. And you were a bit shitty the other day, Coxie, because uh, you (laughs) you shared something with me from someone who was being fairly disingenuous and and pretty fake in a very piss poor kind of a way. Um, Yeah, it was piss poor. And basically, well, I'll let you explain it, Coxie, because you'll do a much better job than me. As long as I don't get ranty. Oh, no, I want you to get ranty. (laughs) I like it when you're ranty. Somebody uh, pointed me in the direction of a, how are we going to term this? Are we going to be very gentle? Yes, we'll be very gentle. A a fellow business person, Mm -hmm. somebody I don't know particularly well. Um, actually I don't know at all. I've never met, but I was looking at a new product that they had launched and in launching that new product, they had ripped the shit out of their competitors Mm. on their landing page. They had just said some really horrible things about all their potential competitors rather than immediately pointing out the benefits of their particular product. They decided to drop down to a level of saying how shit everybody else was first which yeah. I felt was just a pathetic way to come at talking about the benefits of a product that you've launched. Yeah. Instead of talking about your customers and their problems yes. or their pain points. Yeah, the amazing um benefits of of 
said business's particular program, it was just, hey, I'm just going to go kick everyone else in the nuts yes. as a way to show how good I am. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it is. And I'm sure that most other people like myself reading that would read that and think, well, you know what? I'm actually really not interested in working with you. Yeah. And at a time, so this person is connected to the trades. And at a time when we as traders should be banding together and working together to find solutions for us as tradies, this person is really, I guess, standing out on their own in a way that's, it's quite vile, actually. It's quite foul. It's a terrible way to behave as part of the trades. This person should be a leader. They're in a position of leadership. They should be leading in a positive way, not a negative way. It'd be like me standing up saying that, um, oh, I don't know, all other plasterers are shit rather than just saying, you know what, I do this job. This is how I service my clients. But, you know, if I don't fit for you, I can certainly help you find another one. Yeah. Goodness knows, as builders, there were many occasions that the clients weren't right for us, but they were right for one of our competitors, and we were more than happy to pass that client on to the right person for them. Yeah. I, I, I don't get this uh, fear mentality, I suppose, that drives some business owners into feeling that they need to take down other people or other businesses rather than focusing on what it is that they do. Yep. And it, it drags everybody else down in the process. It does. Like one plasterer saying, oh, all we'll use plaster as a shit. Um, you should use us instead. Yeah. It just makes makes consumers or, you know, the, the customers of plasterers feel like, oh, well, the others are all shit and you're shit. So clearly all plasterers are shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we may have substituted the word plasterer for a different industry type. <laughs> <laughs> so but at the end of the day, like what what is there to gain to be by being negative about well anybody full stop realistically, but particularly in business at a critical time like this when we should all be working together because there are a lot of problems we're all sa- facing that are the same, and I guess if I had any fears at the moment, it would be that um, tradies as a whole fall back into the fear of there isn't enough work for everybody, and there is. Yeah. There might not be enough work for you if you haven't looked at this opportunity as an opportunity to pivot what you're doing and find a different way to do it so you stand out from the crowd in a positive way. But realistically, there will still be enough work for everybody to go around over time. Okay, sure, we've got a period of time that's going to be a bit tough. But I don't want, you know, I'm starting to see tradies understand that we don't have to be fearful of the plumber down the road. I don't have to be fearful of the plumber three suburbs over because we all actually have different target markets and we're all working on different projects and we all have different personalities. So we then present to a client in a different way and the client's going to take the person that works best for them. And there's plenty of room for us all to fit. So I don't want to see tradies fall back into that habit. And this kind of behavior is leading that habit to become normal again. Well, it's, yeah. And I I feel like it, it just swings back to the every man for himself or every woman for themselves mentality where it's like, mm-hmm. fuck you, Jack. I'm getting the last roll of dunny paper. Yes. Instead of saying, oh hey, goodness. how about I split it with you? Yeah. Because, you know. I, I would have thought at a time like this, that would be what we're all doing. And there's certainly a lot of that, please. Um, this is Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Podcast, but. There's a lot of sharing. There's a lot of sense of community. And that's what I hope is the positive benefit, which I think, circles back to what you were talking about before, the positive benefit being that we take away that fakeness, that we start to remember what our community is and how we serve one another, how we can help to contribute to everybody's daily happy lives rather than being, like you say, every man or woman for themselves. Yeah. And there has been some incredible um, community, sense of community come out of, of the Rona uh and and the ensuing madness that's um been a part of it uh and i guess you know what we're talking about is a minority group of behaviors that we've probably observed and in this one particular case obviously and i've seen a bit of it as well um and i th- i suppose that's human nature in a lot of ways it's built into all of us is that tendency to take care of ourselves we are selfish creatures you know we we look after our own survival and 
it's the good old briefing on the on the aeroplane, which no one flies on anymore. But um, <laughs> you know, get your own oxygen mask first, and then take care of everybody else. Uh, whereas I'm certainly seeing a lot more people who are thinking about their fellow human, maybe not first, but simultaneously with themselves it's like well how can we take care of each other instead of yes. how do i scramble over the top of everybody to get the last tin of baked beans absolutely and and i think within the trades and it's been awesome to see a lot of our members and and you know probably no doubt listeners as well g'day out there all, all of our listeners uh looking at this as okay well can I create a little power team of tradies so that mm. we don't um, upset the coppers and get in trouble with the whole, uh, you know, four square meter thing and all the rules that are floating around? Um, and, you know, if the Sparky's going out there, I know him, I've done some work with him, I can get him to have a look at the job for me and report back so I don't actually have to go out there. And then I can do the same for him on a different job or, you know, I'm swinging past Bunnings at seven o'clock in the morning, I could grab some stuff for him and throw it on his account and just, uh, I think there's some fantastic opportunities for the trades to actually collaborate and uh, and save a lot of time and also, you know, raise each other up in the process, I think is probably the key in that. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like if we don't, then we all stand to lose. But I think if we can come together, work together, find ways to be more effective and efficient together, suddenly we have opportunities that will help see us through this difficult period. There's no mistaking it's tough. It's, it's you know, quite challenging for business at the moment. Yep. We're very blessed. I don't feel tradies think they're blessed at the moment, but they are still able to work. They you know, sure, it's challenging. Sure, it presents some new opportunities that maybe we didn't really want to have to think about, but they can still work. We yep. are very fortunate in most states of Australia that we can. So I guess we need to be use, thinking about the positive ways in which we can use that to our advantage at this point in time. Mm. So what could this business have done differently? Coxie, as an example. Oh dozen things. How about they just talk about the benefits of their product to suit their clients? How about they talk about the differences? You know, we all have points of difference. So the plumber around the corner, or let's go back to plasterers, the plaster around the corner might not do square set. So how about they talk about how they work with decorative corners rather than talking about how square sets shit. You know, it's really not hard to talk about what your benefits are. It's not hard to talk about what your strengths are without actually pulling somebody else down. Mm. it's yeah. an easy it's a no-brainer talk about your point of difference talk about how you satisfy the needs of your clients in you know what their pain points are so how is it that you're actually helping them with those pain points rather than talking down your competition there's never a reason to talk down your competition yeah it's, it's simple yeah and um rather than that you know spruik about the industry as a yes. whole it's like hey you know, my industry is doing some amazing stuff mm. and here's all the benefits of working with my industry and mm. what they can do for you. Uh, you know, the reason we think we're so awesome as a part of this great industry is one, two, three, X, Y, Z. Instead okay, so I just, feel like we yep. do that as business coaches. That's something that we talk to all the time. We feel that every business would find a lot of value in a good business coach. We're not for everybody. Our model no. isn't for everybody. What we do isn't for everybody. But yep. we make no bones about the fact that business coaching is a smart idea for your business. And here yeah. are the ways in which you can do it with us. But, you know, if we don't suit, we've got lots of other suggestions. We're quite happy to pass you on to the right person that we feel will fit best with you. Yeah. Rather than say, oh, all those other coaches are all shit. Yes. Um, we're probably the only good one out there. <laughs> so if you don't work with us, you're obviously an idiot. You're shit too, apparently. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Like, what that does is, go back to the plasterer thing, if you're running marketing that says, oh, be wary of all these other plasterers because, um, you know, most of them are shit. And if someone 
reading your marketing material has already worked with one of those plasters or had one of those other plasters do work for them, what you're saying to that customer is, well, you're a dickhead because you worked with a shit plasterer. Yeah. And so even if they needed some more work done, they ain't going to use you. No. Because you just told them their shit. Yes. So So, I I really like to contact this person, see how business is going because I would suggest (laughs) Probably fairly badly, I'd say. I would suggest so. I would suggest that they're attracting the same kind of people as them and you know how challenging they can be to work with. Well, I think I think that sort of approach comes out of, sometimes out of desperation mm. to get more customers. Yes. Um, maybe laziness, maybe a bit of arrogance. Uh, but often I, I, and I've seen, sadly, I've seen businesses do that a lot over the years in all sorts of industries. Mm. And usually it's because they're struggling to get business and they're frustrated and it's like, why are all these other plasterers getting all the bloody work? Yes. Um, how can I get a slice of that pie? Well, all those other plasterers are shit anyway. I'm the best plasterer. Everybody should know that. Yep. It's G'day such an Australian thing listening. to do, isn't it? Sorry, plasterers. But how <laughs> Australian is it to tell everyone that everyone else is shit? Not. We don't. Yeah. Or we don't tell everyone else that I'm good. I don't stand in front of you and tell you that I'm the best at what I do. Mm. I hope that my reputation would tell you that on its own. Yeah. I don't need to come and spruik myself. I just do what I do. You do what you do. The, most of the plasterers do what they do, except for this particular one who likes to tell everyone else the rest of them are shit. Cool. Well, that's, uh, I don't know. I think we've, we've, well, we haven't hit 30 minutes yet. I don't even know how long it is because Zoom just started counting the time when we started bullshitting at the start before we hit record, Coxie. <laughs> but uh, our, our daily tradie, Ronacast, um, this is our first one. Uh, give us some feedback. And if, you's, if there's something you'd like us to tackle in this time of the Rona, then um, let us know. And I think you need to get the song going. If you <laughs> oh, we'll get sued for breach of copyright. Yes, exactly. Everyone's uh, everyone's going a bit mad on that stuff too. Um, if if there's anything you'd like to know about ISO and what it's like to be uh, stuck in your house for 14 days, actually, if you if you're in ISO at the moment, we want to hear from you. We Tell do. us if you're in ISO. I'd love to doing? talk to some listeners that are in isolation. Yeah, we want to. Oh, let's get you on the show. Yeah, let's get please. someone else on who's who's in ISO. Tell us how, how much you're loving it or tell us how much you hate it. Like, like yeah, yeah. He's not happy at all in isolation. But Coxie and I are going to um, make these quicker episodes, uh, daily updates, little thoughts, um, things we've noticed in, uh, in the previous 24 hours with our community or some ideas that might help you uh, with the current climate. And uh, we're going to bring these to you every day until we decide that it's a shit idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Which, Which could, could be, be really quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until my internet completely bombs out and I use up all of my excess data. Yeah, so really quick. <laughs> cool beans. Well, if you're not in the group already, make sure you go to the good old Stork Book. They must be making an absolute killing at the well, moment. That's where everybody goes for their news, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sure everything on Facebook is true. But go to the good old the good old Book of Lies um, and find our group, uh, Tradies in Business. Check out the website, and and if you haven't joined the trade desk, then you're shit. No, we're not saying that, are we? Um, it's free at the moment. It's yes, free at it the moment. Yes, it is free. So uh, yeah, get into the trade desk. There's a heap of resources. We're doing a web uh, a web webinar series. I hate the term webinar. Oh, it's a web drop in session. Come it's and a- join us, and we. Try to help you get a bit clearer. It's a web already. session. We've got a whole bunch of them running. Um, you can have a cuppa with Coxie on Tuesdays. Yeah. Uh, we're doing after work drinks on Friday afternoons on Zoom. That was so much fun last week. Yeah. Thanks guys for showing up. I got the whiskey bottle ready for this afternoon, Coxie. Oh, you're in fine form. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm breaking, breaking out the good single malt for this afternoon's uh, <laughs> after work drinks. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, and we're doing uh, weekly coaching calls now as well, um, yes. weekly coaching and Q&A in the trade desk as well, just to really support all of you through the uh, the age of the Rona. It's going to go down as a, oh, I don't know, is it going to be like a new Stone Age, the Rona <laughs> Age? 
Well, because we're all going to go extinct. Yes, I think we might. <laughs> we'll all kill. I don't know. I'm I'm living with a husband and three children. We could all go extinct. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the only reason my wife's still sane is that her horse is now on our property and she can go visit him during the day. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Baxter. Yeah. Baxter the Wonder Dog. Anyway, that's it from us for today's uh, Trady Ronacast. Uh, we'll chat to you again tomorrow. See you soon. Hooray. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.